<laughs> Jordan, I'm talking about a pack-in with a laptop here. Uh, <laughs> a pack-in hand shot. Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most important, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Old Man Vin here in beautiful downtown Athens, switching the bits, driving the nightmare train, joined every week by Jordan Savong up in Torontosville, and of course, Pedro Mateus on the yeah. Isles of Britannia, together with you, Shot Realm Dynamic, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. Ladies and gentlemen, we got quite the show for you tonight. I am excited. I'm a bit wound up. We were talking in the pre-pre-super shows. In. Go back and listen to that if you're one of our beautiful party patrons. I got this. Showed up. This is unobtainium. You cannot buy one of these. They do not exist. Why do they not exist? Well, they didn't make enough of them. That's about <laughs> the size of a Raspberry Pi. It's roughly the exact same form factor. SBC. But on this guy... Is an N100, a recent, a new N100 quad core, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, 16 gigs of DDR5, Wi Fi 6, NVMe, little NVMe, not a big one. It'll, I guess I could put a big one in there. I just have to drill a hole through the middle once. <laughs> and you stick all this together. We were playing Track Mania last night, and Joe popped in. We were talking to Joe, and I was like, all right, guys, how much is this? How much are you going to pay for it? And Joe's like, 300 bucks. And Ogie's like, 280, 250. These things are 60 bucks. That's why you can't get a hold of them. You cannot buy them right now. Like, this is a cobbled together review sample they were kind enough to send over for interfacing Linux, which they overnighted from like Shenzhen, dude. And they got here in three (laughs) days, man. I look forward to playing with that. I'm in the middle of another project. All this and more. I got some screenshots and, you know, just uh, I did an entire unboxing video over on the Patreon, but I put some uh, photos up. It's got a you know, actual clock battery to it, so it keeps real time. Real ports, three real USBs. It's USB 2, a 2.5 gigajoule Ethernet. You got to get the uh, case for it, though, because you see how if you're a certain age, you're looking at that chip and you're like, that's an exposed die. That's an exposed die. <laughs> Where's where's the lid? Uh, you gotta bring your own B Y O L. Bring your own lid, yeah. man. That's a laptop chip, yeah, in a teeny tiny little SBC. Oh, so tiny! I'm gonna have a fun time playing with that. Um, if you got an account, you can sign up over on Interfacing Linux. If you got some ideas of what you would like to see run on it, there's your chance. Not after the video is published. When you pop in in the YouTube comments section, going, "Hey, could you?" No, I I won't. You should try a bunch of the stuff on the not playlist on Emu Deck on the Emu Deck hardware, the the N100, and see what yeah. actually runs. Because <laughs> they were going to do that, and it wasn't the N100; it was the N97 with Bazite. Oh. So yeah, just install Bazite yeah, and yeah, yeah, see let, what let, actually yeah, runs. Yeah, let, 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 let's let's test their test their claims a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, that, that, now, that gentlemen, what you mean is after I get Windows 3.11 running on it, right? <laughs> Well, no, you, you gotta, you gotta, easy. No, you, you gotta mainline Plan Nine, obviously. Plan Nine, stay Gl- tuned. Gl- Glenda, baby. Uh, yeah, because we're gonna be able to play some games on that. Steam's gonna work on it, and like it's just x86. So this this is a very dangerous product for a lot of reasons. Like if you're into like SBCs, it's cheaper than a Raspberry Pi Five. Think about that. And it's what? x86. That's the big one. It's x86. Yeah. It's x86, man. <laughs> What's going on with you, one Jordan? The Jordan? Miss Jordan, Jordan, McJordan, of the clan, the Jordan. Jordan. <laughs> the, the, the In these Jordan. parts. Oh, uh, El, spoken with mild reverence and disdain, the Jordan. Yeah. El, El Jordan. <laughs> yes, that, that's me. No, it's... Uh, just uh hopefully hopefully gonna go see uh a, a show next week so that's why i'm not gonna be in still wait, still waiting on some ticket situations to get sorted so that may or may not happen but um the perpetual like i'll get excited when i have them in my hand right yeah it's, mm-hmm. it, 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 i i i got i gotta take someone's word on it i'm like no i i i do not believe in words i believe in things that i can see and touch and yeah so ho- hopefully that works out other than that other than that, not much. I had to like my 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 week's been thrown in like a weird twist because I had to reschedule my D and D day. So like, as as an autistic person, I have a very very locked in schedule that I that I found works for me, and now I gotta change it. 
mm. and my jimmies are all rustled. <laughs> I, so yeah, it's like doing That's, an Linux game cast on a Sunday, baby. Well, once upon a time, that was that was the thing. Every day of my <laughs> every day is Linux game cast day. You can't stop. It's like it's, it's always been on a Sunday for me. Just saying. <laughs> Oh, same here. I do Linux Gamecast on a Sunday every day, too. The editing? Yeah. The 11-hour the editing session yes. for the one-hour show, yeah. <laughs> Tell us about your flock of goals, then. I think that was probably the most interesting <laughs> thing. <laughs> I had. Yeah. yeah, no, the, uh, I had a, a bit of a uh, Alfred Hitchcock moment. Um, the um, I went shopping. It's usually Saturdays. Might as well go shopping. Because uh, there's not a lot of people in city center so i just drive to little and uh, park and as soon as i get out of the car i look up at the sky and i see like that's a really dark no that's th those are birds those are just seagulls and i start to hear not you know the usual seagull uh, call I, instead i start to hear the oh, bird poop <laughs> and i go oh shit and i get get back inside the car close the door wait it out walk out and I see a bunch of people <laughs> going oh, fuck <laughs> and just you know <laughs> getting bird poop off their clothes and their hair and whatnot because there were a lot of them and they were just pooping all speaking, over <laughs> speaking of the birds did you ever see that other movie that Tippi Hedren did where it was like her and her husband in a house with like 60 lions Oh, dude, I've seen screenshots of that. Maybe like a clip or two, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you were, yeah it, 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 they were just like, yeah, we're, we're, and we cre they credited all the lions in the film, which was great. <laughs> and several people were injured on set. <laughs> Tippi Hedren had her, was de-scalped, as in like, not well, good. <laughs> lions that do that. Horses, yeah. on the other hand. Whew, much more, whole much different more story. vicious. And they have an internet connection, too, so you better watch out. They're going to follow you home. It's the Steam So, apparently, um, the people who make Risk of Rain are done with making video games, because uh, they are now uh, a part of the Valve family. Yes. As uh, a bit of a interesting move uh they do say that they are still planning on developing the game that they have now canceled now that they're no longer a part of gearbox uh because they don't even get to keep the um the ip that they were working on so randy pitchford gets to keep the uh, risk of rain ip uh and the people who actually make the games uh are now um in the Valve family, I I have mixed feelings. <laughs> what are you talking about? This is like the, this is a story arc. This is where you want to end up, man. Like, uh, all right, I say you, that. Well, there there there's the meme, right? I want game developers to get paid more more money for working less time to make shorter games. This is literally yes. what's going to happen. These guys these guys <laughs> got scooped up by Valve. Now they can take their time, develop their game. Uh if it. Turns out that it's not worth the effort. There's no sunk cost fallacy. They'll be like, you know, just try it, try again. This is it. like, like Ben's saying, this is, this is a success story, I think. Well, I mean, they have plenty of time because like their next scheduled game is not due out until 2029. Yeah. <laughs> so, Valve time working in full effect. Wait, no, that, well, I, it's all right. That was the other studio that Valve. <laughs> yeah. In just yes, that was Campo yeah. Santo. <laughs> right. No, and we're still waiting to hear. I feel like anything from him. Like, are you guys okay? Hello? You wonder <laughs> about stuff like that, man. Um, the the, the, the uh, Hapu people, they have... The only games they've ever made is um, Risk of Rain, Risk of Rain 2, Risk of Rain Remastered, and um, Deadbolt. Yeah. So maybe they can have a new IP called Risk of Bolt or Dead Rain. I don't know. I would really like <laughs> that, to find out exactly like how that's going to work out at the end of the day with a lot of this stuff, because so many people have went to Valve, and I wonder when you go to Valve, you're like, security, paycheck, freedom, flat structure, this is going to work out. But do you go in to Valve thinking, I'm going to be the one to get this, get the ball rolling here. I, I'm going to get, get that team together. Three. <laughs> I, well, or I, even I, episode I, three, you're just like, we're going to get a game out. Like, I'm going to be the change and we're going to get it organized. And you hit that, you know, I, and, and I, I think I think it's on, on, on the individuals, right? Like if 
uh, I, th I think maybe, maybe what we're seeing is a lot of studios don't have the the managerial stamina that once they get acquired by Valve to actually without like the the, the existential pressure of like having to release, they they just kind of stall out. They gas themselves out. Mm -hmm. You never know, and you know Valve could be getting ready to drop all kind of shit because uh, one thing that Deadlock very mm -hmm. recently and before that the Steam Deck showed Alex? all of us was Valve can still keep a secret. And just yeah, poorly. things get materialized. The deadlock was an intentional marketing. Thing. Like, there was, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Steam Deck <laughs> was like, "Hey, this exists now." And and it's was it's like, been all, oh my God, all of the all of the data mining that it, whenever they release something new, everyone goes in and starts to data mine stuff like the whatever HLX is going to be, and it was Counter Strike Two before that, and uh, supposedly there was going to be the Left 4 Dead Two. Source 2 update that never materialized. <laughs> See, this is a problem. Like, Valve has the perfect smoke screen for this because most of it never materializes. So, all of this data mining is just noise. Yeah. It, and, it, like, you take enough shots in the dark, you're like, oh, you got one right. Yeah. Just, it, <laughs> it, it, it is just like stuff that is just in, in the source control. But again, Valve tends to release stuff when it's finished or when they have it's, a, it's at a juncture, I think, like Deadlock, where they're like, okay, we need to get people in on this to actually gather some data to balance things and figure out like how the game will actually work if we want this to be a competitive thing. And so and they yeah, want to make yeah. it fun. I mean, yeah. I, I get it. And they have no, uh, but sometimes, you know, we could get into that. We've been had that conversation a couple of times on the show, like, you know, having the pressure to like, you know, the drive to do it, you know, the incentive, like just sit around, like, we don't know how we would react if you're just like, Hey, here's infinite resources and planning and go, you're going, you're going to go do your planning, your game designs and all that. Will that ever materialize into a finished product? Sometimes it does. Hey, just said, Alex, that happened. Then again, so did Artifact. That happened. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe in a, in a, in a, in a realm where Hearthstone flopped, Artifact may have had a future, but yeah, no, there's... I don't know, man. Um, but I don't yeah. even know if Artifact would have existed if Har uh, Hearthstone had flopped. <laughs> I demand to see the exact same outrage for Valve as was shown Microsoft for gobbling up these small independent studios. That at least they're keeping them. At, at least they're keeping them on staff. billion dollars for Zenimax. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. They got ripped I... off. They were underpaid, Pedro. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, I, I will just keep saying these studio employees that get acquired by Valve at least get to keep their jobs. If they, if they're gonna quit, it's because they don't want to be there no more. You so, get yeah, it's because like, they want to make games again. <laughs> and you got to yeah. think about it. Like at the end of the day, like you know, even if you're like, even everything's going smooth, Valve's like, hey, you want? You're like, yeah, yeah. You t take an extra year on that. Polish it off. Like right. Just just like if, if Valve comes knocking, you're like, all right. I, I don't think there's a no there. There's like you might lie to yourself and pretend you're going to sit there and go i really need to think about that for a little bit but uh yeah at the end of the day good job everybody happy for them hopefully something fun comes out now a couple of new games this week starting out with nothing but dicks you fucking <laughs> disgusting ass perverts are up to no good and the Jackbox people want to enable it. So it's the Jackbox Naughty Pack. They say, we know how you play our games and we want to accommodate you by adding three spicy games, thinking it all that long, dirty drawful, and let me finish our dirty new drawful, games. Dirty drawful, like, come dirty on. Dirty drawful. Right. Oh, I didn't know there was uh, a... Like, dude, look, like, dude, yeah, th this, this is a game with, like, fucking negative time to penis already. Right. You're just, now you're encouraging yes. people to draw penises? Okay. Like, yeah. <laughs> so spicy, in fact, that they need to have a bunch of streamer and contact op content options so that you can actually stream it on a non-Pornhub, non-OnlyFans type platform like twitch.tv slash the next gamecast, <laughs> where you could give us your Bezos bucks and become a member and gain access to our Discord channel. But anyways, um, um, I don't know how this would show up on Twitch. I don't, I, I, it would be very, very mild, but I don't know. Okay, I'm going to tell you something Jackbox. right now that's going to make you mad, because I guarantee you there's a missed integration opportunity. Now you know what I'm talking about. Can you not think of a Bluetooth device that this should have integrated with? Oh, butt plug? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the butt plug that I owe is just the obvious one. <laughs> should have been done. You missed it right there. Like. Steam, Steam, Steam Workshop. That's, that's what that's <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're already doing it. There's already several uh, buttplug.io mods in the Steam Workshop, so yeah, this is just do I, it. I, 
So I, I looked up what it actually does in Lethal Company, and it's just like the closer enemies get, the more it vibrates. All right. <laughs> so just like normal anyway. Uh, planned re uh, release date on the 12th, so just a couple of days away. Um, it in, it's more Jackbox, so it's going to work with Linux day one, no problem. And uh, yeah, the <laughs> Drawful, you, you need to come just watch us play Drawful, because we don't need the adult <laughs> setting. <laughs> Yeah, or nothing I, but incentive to draw more dick pics. That's right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Re regular drawful is like fractional time to penis. Dirty drawful is negative time to penis. Right. The, like, the, well, this is what I put in the notes, man. Like, my first thought is like, let's just do like, let's download. I'll go. I'll grab a copy, and we just do nothing but PG shit the entire time. Yeah. Like <laughs> hyper friendly. <laughs> it's all Sesame Street. Yeah. 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 Flowers and rainbows and like smiles and shit. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Good time. A tragedy that befell the Linux gaming community. Does the loss the lies? of Rocket Cars. Yes. Rocket League. At its peak, I dare say we had waiting room only for the after show, which mm -hmm. strangely led to people not watching the show. <laughs> <laughs> We would get to the end of the show, into the after shows, and then all of a sudden, chat would like, "Hey guys, oh man, a great show, loved it." And like, uh -huh. and then Epic decided, for the benefit of everyone else, they were going to cancel the Linux version, make it an Epic Store exclusive, and well, I'm not going to say it's the last we heard of Rocket League. Last I heard, it was hanging out in um, Fortnite, kind of a little bit. It, it you can go into it from Fortnite, yes, because Fortnite is the multi everything game. oh my god <laughs> I, I okay i know they're not doing this but i want them to like if you log into rocket league via fortnite your fortnite skin is stretched over the car <laughs> i want to see that that'd be great <laughs> meat cars for everyone release the meats <laughs> right four wheels of frankfurt's mm. so i was kind of excited when i saw a little post pop up and i'm like because we've been waiting. What do we have? What was option B? Like, we didn't even know what to do because we just got accustomed to playing Rocket League in the after shows and goes like, hey, it worked great and it was easy to get yeah, everybody in. We, we went through a period where we were like trying all the various clones. Yeah, and none we of were them like really, looking around. And nothing really scratched to, the itch. Before I put it down, we found out, or I guess we were reminded or remembered or stumbled across that there was another open source soccer game thing with a soccer ball in it. Carball. Tux cart. <laughs> Super Tux soccer. <laughs> I, I, we're not going to use more, the word soccer with this. All right. We're going to car Yes, carball, it, it, I believe. It, it, uh, I was, I was going to say football, right? Because it's football, not soccer. <laughs> it, anything, any word you put next to whatever that is, is insulting the thing you're putting next to it because <laughs> it's bad. It has been perpetually bad. I looked up the history of that. People have been bitching about that. Not like, Berg, do it. They're like, hey, it'd be neat if like any work was done on this. But hey, man, people got other shit to do. I get it. I feel you. So, here we are in 2024, coming towards the end of that, and I saw this. Now, for the video version, that's all you got to get. If you're listening to the audio, uh, there's really not much to explain. I saw this, and I got excited. Just to, what we have a little bit of a square tangle. Who looks like an eraser. Oh, yeah, yeah but... it's an eraser. It's straight up an eraser. That's <laughs> not allowed in Portugal anymore, so... <laughs> It's not food shaped, so it's fine. <laughs> this 25 second video, my thought was that looks 100% more playable than Super Tux Ball. It just does. Yeah, it, does. No, the, the, it looks like a hyper primitive Rocket League. And yeah, they. Um, I, 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 okay. And I want you to think about this, though, because everything starts with blocks running into shit. It yeah. does. <laughs> Welcome to Game Dev 101 right there. Somebody's going to be like, well, actually, you fucking know the point I'm trying to make, I'm trying to help by. And it's really small, too. You take out the Vulcan bits, this thing's like 100k. Prototype. Fast prototype. Guy just wanted to get it together, see if he had something he could maybe work with. He knows all about the other stuff, you know, because it's like the physics and renders are out of sync, two different systems work. He's like, oh, I'll stick all this together in the shaders and all that fun stuff. Let's see this video one more time. Because there was a time there was a time when supersonic acrobatic rocket powered battle cars looked frighteningly like this. Mm -hmm. This is what they were like establishing fix. I remember the first time I saw the braid prototype. It was that, but the block was standing up. Mm -hmm. That's what braid looked like. 
art, art, art comes later. You can worry about that stuff later. Uh, but yeah, no, this is, it's like super early days. Very, very promising though. Like you, you saw that, like, yeah, they, they got the rocket league shit down. All they need to do is add the cube physics and we're basically set. Um, <laughs> the, spe speaking of though, I, I looked in the issues. People are trying to get this building on Mac. They're trying to get it running on other platforms. Um, get it and running when, on so, Debian. Yeah. And, uh, when, uh, asked what are the next steps, uh, the guy, uh, came and said that, uh, priorities are physics and multiplayer. Fuck Which, yes. yes, yes, this Good. is what I want to hear. <laughs> Good that, priorities. This, yes. this is a young man with his priorities in the right damn order. Physics, <laughs> multiplayer, and then maybe adding some actual cars. Focus on the, the multi- Physics could yeah. be dodgy. Dodgy physics are fun in the early days. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah, that, uh, I just looked at the pull requests. There's one pull request in that Git repo, uh, and it's for the readme.md. And the comment is edit tips for getting it to run on Arch. Thank you. <laughs> oh man, you see that you <laughs> got to Thank you so much. <laughs> this actually got a decent bit of traction because it showed up on Hacker News. Mm. Yeah. I I, people people really don't want to have to sign up for an epic account to play some rocket league there well, we were thinking about it man uh what was it maybe two or three months ago we were like did we ever have a i might have it, it led into a conversation i think i was like did anybody ever like do reverse engineer the uh rock the original rocket league servers like there's something that we could run at home and like connect the original version to it's never been done nobody ever played around with it which mm -hmm. later led into like what's the clone situation it just doesn't exist so hyper excited about this it's a fun concept i'm dumbfounded that nobody has picked this up because it was such a great concept it's kind of weird if you don't you're like wait what 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 rocket huh fair fair you just got to imagine five years ago it was one of the largest esports games there was man yeah it filled stadiums of real people to come watch that now it's got like 12 people playing in Fortnite, so just next to Guitar Hero. How sad. Yeah, the, the epic kiss of death is very much real. Good on the developers, they got paid. They'll be linked to everything in the show notes. Go check it out. Uh, I got it set up on Vulgar. Like, participate. Like, do things. Like, hey, this I, I have yet to file my bug report. I could not get it to work with the x clone controller. Which, yeah, do, do your part. Like, <laughs> just stay involved. Just show up and, like, knock on the door and be like, hey, you need help with anything. Um, see if you can get you it to... Get some SDL bindings running in there, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 that might, yeah, that yeah, might, yeah, that might be a fun starter may, project. Maybe before, maybe before the Christmas, we we can have a multiplayer match of erasers live in the after shows. <laughs> in there. Of sliding erasers, just we, we can throw it out. <laughs> yeah, just, drifting across the field to, to to a kazoo rendition of the Jurassic Park theme by John Williams. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about Rogue FP, which is a yeah. Rogue first person, not free play, right? Not free play or free use, thankfully. Um, but yeah, Rogue uh, FP. Uh, we did we threw chairs at it back in the day when we were uh, reviewing games. It is exactly what it says on the tin: the OG Rogue, but in first person. And there's a little uh, there's a update about version 3.0 coming soon. It seems like when you're designing a Rogue, like uh, implementing systems is a little more complex than say uh just adding a module if you want to have, add pits you have to like fix ai you have to add a bunch of other stuff um add some fancier graphics and now my at symbols are gone no uh but the uh 3.0 update is coming soon it's gonna have a bunch of stuff in there i thought this was like a fun fun twist on rogue i played a lot of it in class rather than paying attention to what i was supposed to be paying attention to so I, I just have a lot of good nostalgia with it and yeah you, you walk around the dungeon and you, you kill some you kill some h's and some some c's and some other stuff except now there's an actual tile set so it looks like monsters looks and like sprites claws. <laughs> for monsters <Yes. laughs> and uh the the thing that got me was the like the little gif they have on the post uh with the conflagration this is as someone who lived in Portugal during th one of the big summers with, you know, forest fires uh, all over the place, and to everyone in California, basically, since the past few years, uh, that'll give you some pause for thought. That's like, that's, that's too real, man. <laughs> for something with such, you know, simple graphics, that, that's real. <laughs> That, when, when shit catches fire, it goes out of control fast. Yeah. Dude, 
<laughs> Real dungeons have fires. Uh, man. So yeah, golf with your friends is still getting updates and like talk about a game that used to just part of the charm was how broken it was. <laughs> yes, it was so jank and then they actually managed to fix it for the most part, unless you're really laggy and playing with someone, you know, on the other side of the world, uh, then it, it'll still be a bit jank, but it, for the most part, it works okay. Uh, it's... We've played it a lot in the uh, after show. Can I play uh, as Jeff Goldblum? No, but you can put a you hat can, on your uh, on your ball. You, you, that, can, uh, you can play as Jeff Goldblum's <laughs> balls. You can. Uh, yes. <laughs> it would look like uh, it belongs in Jurassic Park. But it, yeah, it, it is. They have the new um, Olympus Odyssey course. It's out now. And you, if you... This one, I believe, is free. Uh, which is uh, a bit of good news because I did have a look at the complete edition to, you know, complete my collection. Valve does those uh, bundles on the Steam store about complete your collection for this game. 44 pounds and 61 pence. <laughs> I, you know, I don't hate this game as much as Jordan does, but um, yeah, I don't like it that much either. <laughs> now, uh, all right, I'll, let's do a little I, bit of investigation. Yes, Jordan, you hate golf. Um, I just, I just hate golf. It's not, it's not this game in particular. It's just golf in general. I don't like golf edition. either, but it's just it's a video game. <laughs> uh, complete <laughs> set. Uh, two of fourteen items are already in your library. Oh, $50, yeah, fifty dollars and twenty-eight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, like. I think all the all this crap is like it's all cosmetic bullshit, isn't it? Uh, let, let, I, let's click on bundle info and find <laughs> I've tried it. There we go. All right. There's there's a few courses uh, in there as well. Hat. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So so there's there's some level packs. <laughs> How dare they charge for levels? <laughs> yes, that's why the reviews are all negative. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Here's what you save, five dollars. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't know, man. Like they've done really good with like uh Team 17 bought them originally from the uh, acquired them, however, from the fun pimps. And they've tried to polish it up and it's been on like I think it was on Game Pass or something like that for a minute. Uh plenty of cosmetics. It's still a fucking fun game. It is. It's good to get a group of people together and uh you know, even if you need a family game. And there's a bunch of different modes. So you got like just your regular golf, then you got hoops, then you got the hockey one where the hockey guys are bouncing back and forwards. Good times. Go check it out. There we go. Get your flying balls <laughs> with this particular new course. That, that, that seems to be the gimmick. <laughs> Zeus's balls. <laughs> Step dragons. Ladies and gentlemen, Qualcomm CEO has confirmed that desktops are planned. The fuck's that mean? Let me tell you what I mean. Sorry. Snapdragon X Elite. We went shut up about it for about a month. That was that new laptop. <laughs> Arm. Dope. Fast. Not not quite as fast as like the M11 or whatever from the uh Maple. But getting there. I mean it did have a difficulty multiplayer. It was running Windows 11. You gotta forgive that. <laughs> No, they asked. They were like, hey man, uh, because there was like a little mobile conference and all that. One of the dudes was like, Y'all gonna make some desktops? You already got these laptops, and we know you're gonna make some like lower versions of this, but how about some desktops? And um dude was like, Yeah. So somebody wrote an entire article around that. <laughs> right. <laughs> and 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 now now for wishful thinking, I would I would like I'm not holding my breath. I would like some some sort of like solution where you could like upgrade these ARM desktops. Because you know they're gonna do like the little, they're gonna release like the NUC all in ones SOCs where if you want upgrade it, you just gotta like buy a new one. Maybe they'll maybe they'll have like upgradable RAM. Maybe you can plug in another drive or something. I would like something like with the the old Calzada boards where you could just like plug a CPU module into basically a daughter board that is nothing but like PCI holes and memory slots. And yeah, that, that's 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 what I want out of. I think we're going to see, you know, a couple of different things. Like what I said in the notes, it's mainly because there's no standard for like mm -hmm. SOCs, dude. Like everybody just rolls their own. Like, you know, yeah, this they're, they're, Razda, they're like, ah, shit, uh, give me a square. I'll see what I can pack on there. Right. 
if we could come up there, nobody's, ever, we, we can't even get fucking GPUs and laptops in 2024. All right. It, like every time somebody's like, let's do something modular. It can't be done. Isn't that right? Framework framework. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Possible. As said by Dell and HP and Lenovo and all the other ones. Oh, don't worry. They'll all release and, uh, more yeah. uh, repair friendly models. Yeah. The, which this one's got 8% Ram. less glue <laughs> holding in the battery. No, but dude really did say, he's like, hey, planning going forward. So I'm thinking like mini PCs, full on desktop parts, and you know, servers. Yeah. But on the consumer end, really interesting to see. Really interesting to see, especially if we can finally get, you know, the Snapdragon X Elite, like desktop level part in like a like 12 inch Chromebook. That would be nice. <laughs> that would actually be nice. <laughs> you could run the hell out of some whatever a Chromebook runs. Uh, you could uh, <laughs> flash core boot into it and uh, run actual Linux, which is what you know sensible people well, do these days. <laughs> the, 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 the nice thing, too, about the Snapdragon stuff is, assuming the bootloaders are in a complete nightmare fuel situation, you could just be able to get mm -hmm. Linux running on this. In a few months, once those patches get upstreamed and, you know, you can actually boot it. And we're waiting um, on that. Uh, yeah. Like, they've got their version of Debian up and running. Oh, God. That's why I wanted to get one of those. When I see stuff like that, you know, when the original uh, Snapdragon X came out, I'm like, the tech tubers are going to fuck this up for the Linux crowd. There they went full power ahead. And I'm like, motherfuckers, there's the Debian distro right on the goddamn page. Get, use that. Quit trying to, like, I couldn't get Bazite to install on it. <laughs> It's it, listen. It's not an MSI claw. It's a lot harder. <laughs> Interfacing <laughs> Linux. Go watch some more videos. I want to get that shit big enough to where I can knock on their door next time with this shit. Be like, send mm -hmm. me one so we can actually get some real testing done on it. Now, here's what I'm also worried about: those laptops were premium devices. I'm talking twelve, fourteen hundred bucks. Acer wanted like eighteen hundred for like one that I don't know. It had chocolate sprinkles on it or something. Now it's gonna happen. Not none of us. We we don't look eighteen hundred dollar and. I was about to say eighteen hundred dollar hand job, baby. Like, <laughs> I, I mean, m maybe if it's really good, it, it better. Is it, that like, has to be a really good no, hand job, no, no. Jordan. I'm talking about a pack in with a laptop here. Uh, a pack in hand job. <laughs> this is a blow up doll that, like, you open up the box and it just inflates, <laughs> like fucking autopilot. Don't fuck it up. It only works once. <laughs> <sighs> interfacing Linux, yeah, I call this <laughs> interfacing Linux. It, it's a guys. different kind of interface. Yeah, right. uh, <laughs> so, uh, check this out. Let me see if I can even vaguely remember where it's going with this. Uh, prices, they were expensive, man. Pack and, and job. <laughs> they're expensive, you know. What I hope that they don't do with this is they're like, we're gonna take on the Mac minis and all that and have similar pricing and have it ship similar low volume. Like I'm not looking for the Pedro $400 version. Like I'm willing to pay a thousand bucks for one that's dope. Not paying I'd, three. I'd, I'd, I'd maybe go up to 1500 if it was like really cool. You know, I will when it's on like third gen. Yeah. I, I'm not testing the running Linux. I'm not smashing my head for any more than a grand on a desktop part. And it would have to be quite the mighty day. You know, I, I want to see no. something like, oh, it's, you know, 48 core, something like that. 192 yes. core, maybe. Soldered in memory RAM. <laughs> oh. Yeah, on a desktop, it's... I'm not giving up my x 6 desktop anytime soon. Uh, it On a laptop, yes, like the 400 currency units, you give me a ARM laptop for under 400 pounds with a reasonable mid-range proper performing um arm chip absolutely i i bought um the pine book pro which is let's hear about your fisher price toy <laughs> yes it is effectively a toy it runs the uh rock chip 3399 which is you know about on par with a raspberry pi 4 so uh a laptop running on that particular hardware is uh, yeah, so give me something a little more mid-range, but still cheap, still reasonably See cheap. See if they can get there. I mean, laptops are a tough <laughs> sell because people, you get, there, there's no mid-range in laptops anymore, man. It is bottom barrel and it is 
yeah, hand jobs. Chromebook yeah. or, the, the, or gaming. The mid range is now uh, what the low end used to be. <laughs> yes. Right. Like you start looking at like because when I think mid range laptop, I'm thinking you know like six eighty seven hundred bucks for a mid range laptop that I want, not one that That's... I'm going to deal with. Yeah, f- <laughs> five hundred bucks is kind of like the low end for like the cheap laptops. I guess now they're like four or three hundred bucks, but like they have the EMMC and like the jacked up Celerons, like that's they're the barely even the that has like EMMC, even, yeah. it's m.2 it's an m.2 emmc ssd so you just pull it out put a, an actual ssd and it's like they're done we were i mean we were talking about that in the pre pre super shows and once upon a time yeah that was that yeah. was the, that was the play um yeah i don't know uh we just thought we had been mentioned like desktop parts are on the roadmap at Qualcomm, and they have no reason like Qualcomm sells the shit out of this stuff. And I think it's part of their strategy. And I'm always going to bring this up because they've completely open sourced and upstreamed all the stuff that you need to get one of these boards up. They're not playing Broadcom bullshit. With like, yeah, because they want people to really use them. Yeah, right. So they're doing it right. <laughs> I don't know if we can exactly get all the uh, kernel bits for this next one, though. Yeah. Theoretically, we should maybe. maybe. They don't even know what official means, apparently. Uh, but uh, Retroid, the um, group that's developing the Retroid Pocket, which is a Steam Deck ish uh, handheld gaming uh, console type situation, which is ARM based. Uh, and it claims that it will have official support for Batasara and Armbian. It's an open Linux kernel for community developers. And then <laughs> the uh, Batisera people on Twitter went, uh, can you clarify what you mean by official support for Batisera? <laughs> and at Is the there a link to this they, Twitter? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, right there. there. Right. <laughs> What's on the imager link? That's the complete thread for people who don't have uh, Twitter. Like myself! <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it, it, the reply was, uh, yeah, we're working on the Betasera build, so it's official in the sense that the actual Retroid people are making it work specifically for Betasera. And then is like, okay, when your code is ready, just send it back mm-hmm. our way so we can make sense of it. <laughs> Don't forget to check out Steam Fork. We, we talked about it a couple of days. If you have an x86 handheld, Steam Fork. Uh, yeah. But... Yeah, yeah. The, the 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 messaging could have definitely been a lot clearer. Maybe maybe some like punctuation would have helped. Um, but yeah, I, I guess it just means that these guys are are working on. Uh, I thought it, at first it meant that they were gonna like upstream support for the the platform, so that like yeah, Batosera and Arbian will get it by virtue of all Linux supporting it because it's supported in the kernel. But it looks like it. it they are. I mean, if you just read it like it is, they're like official yeah. support. And like yeah, we, we're gonna officially support. But yes, that's our official support, not the official support of right people developing. Yeah. It doesn't industry. say officially supported by. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If, if 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 you are if you if you are running Batosera or an Armbian on your Retroid, they will they will answer your requests. I guess. Let me help you that. out, Retroid Pocket. So these pedantic nerds, j- just next time you do this, say shit runs Linux, comma yo period. <laughs> yes, we're making this particular distro our. That's all you gotta do. And they'll shut up, they'll be happy with it. (laughs) Then, you're gonna come back over to my house and we're gonna discuss what the fuck, why why is the D-pad and analog backwards on the left side? That makes perfect sense. Serial killer. That that makes perfect sense. The the, dual shock is the the best uh, configuration. That makes perfect sense. That's the the PSP layout. Yeah, that's wrong with a bunch of extra words. Agreed. (laughs) No, no. You you, you gotta go fight all the PSP people. All of them. (laughs) Okay. I had one. (laughs) Yeah, Pedro, go, go 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 fight him. I want to see this. I'm not gonna fight Pedro. <laughs> what 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 if you fought Pedro and like three other people in a, in a, in a Jello pit? How about you just fight the three other people and you leave me out of this? Are we talking like I, points fight or like last man? Like somebody ain't getting out. Um, because that's two to, different types of fight. I mean, I think I think the Jello will determine that for us. We'll we'll we'll, we'll find that. Out. We'll jump off that bridge when we get to it. <laughs> uh, okay, so you, you just throw people at each other and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, play the Star Trek fight music. Do we have any information how much these things are? The Retroid Pocket that Not looks uh, pricey. <laughs> yeah, they they are still they are still in development. Uh, they they say you can email them to request the developer unit. 
I okay. Guess. Hey, if you're listening, get in contact. You can figure it out. Also, uh, make a dude. Can see if you guys can get like the shelf for the Smash Z. Oh wait, no, we got uh, Retroid Pocket Five, two hundred nineteen US. It's all oh. sold out. All right, reasonably priced. Armbian, dude. Like Armbian's mm-hmm. a good thing. And yep. what are these things running internally, man? Uh, SOC wise. Uh, they are a A seventy seven at two point eight, and oh, it's, uh, all right, and uh, it's one A seven seven at two point four. Yeah, so they they got they got like big little little big big little littler architecture. All so right. they got yeah they got they got four at uh, one point eight. They got three. at Well, 2.4. I mean modern yeah. arm, uh, big slightly <laughs> yeah, big sli- slightly big <laughs> less ish. Yeah, six six gigs of RAM, one hundred twenty eight gigs of internal storage, two hundred bucks. Normal- yeah, no wonder it's sold out. Yeah, no, normally yeah. runs Android 5.5 inch. Yeah, like the, the, the analog sticks are like hull, so they don't get the, the drift. Like, and we need not- to bring that up, though. Uh, traditionally, like this has always been their hack for their gaming cons. This is like the Retroid thing. It's like we just like fuck all this custom stuff. We're just going to use Android mm-hmm. for our gaming handhelds. Like makes sense, right? Mm-hmm. And so this is kind of a big thing for them. Amber yeah. Nick, they, they also use Android and Linux. <laughs> we don't talk about them on the show. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. I didn't know that, and that's why. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, a lot of the ARM, um, or I should say 99% of the ARM handhelds uh, run some version of Android. Okay, no, no, <laughs> hang on. You, yeah, let me, I have a lot of experience in this. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> As in, it will fucking start, technically. Mm-hmm. No hardware acceleration, <laughs> nothing else works. But it, it will get to a screen, which you can it say, works. look, Android's running on this. Can I do anything with it? Wow. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, you yeah, have yeah, the yeah. one version of the drivers for that one custom kernel version that they yeah, compiled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, runs, it runs Honeycomb 3.0. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> 13 years ago. The, the, the tablet only one. Yeah. Not even. <laughs> yeah. That's it. No. Oh, <laughs> runs Android. No, they did it. We're not. They do seem. I didn't find anything like terribly bad or nefarious said about them. And hey, that's good. It's good to have options. Mm-hmm. So, uh,. One option you might not have, uh, but Godot would like to say you kind of still could. If you could, you you could. They're they're just not going to do it for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, this is from GodotEngine.com. Links to all of these stories in our show notes for you to peruse after the fact. Yeah. So there's a little blog post from uh fuck I had the guy's name up and I completely spaced on it. It is Emmy, um not the keyboardist from Insta from different Emmy, um but uh there there the question is. Where, when will, uh, when will official console support for Godot happen? And the answer is probably not anytime soon. And they go on and they give you the, a couple of reasons uh, as to why they want to remain fully open source uh, free, uh, which means that they can't pull in the proprietary libraries uh, that a lot of consoles require interfacing with a bunch of v- various different middlewares pro- provide or presents like some legal liability. Um, they basically say we can't support this, which is a very unattractive uh, proposition for a lot of companies that like, you know, if you're if you get into trouble on your with your console port, uh, there's there, 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 there might be some issues there. Um, and also from a financial perspective, they can't aff- because they run primarily on donations. They can't afford the uh, the licensing and the uh, development hardware in order to do that. But, you know, there are options. Uh, they do mention that there is a community maintained version of Godot for the Nintendo Switch. It's not fully featured, but it will get your game working. Uh, there's also W4 Games as well, which is the uh, which is the uh, corporation that they set up where you can they will port your game for you. It won't be official Godot support, but it is by the people who make Godot. So it's as close as you're going to get in the legally separate zone. And yeah, they have man. a link to the uh, unofficial ones as well, like Lone Wolf and Pineapple and Roar Lab. I, 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 <laughs> I will say, uh, maybe not the best move from a marketing standpoint, but from an ethics standpoint, point, not bringing up W4 and saying like, by the way, you can also give us a bunch of money to do it as well. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> they, they, they could have been kind of scummy about it and try to use it as a funnel, but they're like, no, you'll find out about that on your own. Here's what it is for Godot proper. And I do think, like, with W4, it's, you know, we talked about it when they first set it up. And I'm like, it's good to have the option, but, like, um, this week, here's something I didn't know. Apparently, it is, like, Nintendo will legitimately come hunt you down if you tell anyone, dare speak, how much you paid for a dev kit. <laughs> for a Switch. Somehow, not surprising. <laughs> 
<laughs> I like like did some searching on this because I watched a video and it's like, hey, the thing showed up. I can't say what's in the box. And like this is a look at terror in this poor for our little indie game. But the thing showed yeah. up. Cut off Mar the Mario with the fucking loaded nine mil. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, it, it was like a very excited hostage. Like, bye bye now. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I was reading through and they're like, what are you talking about? I was like, oh, that must have been his dev kit finally showed up. And then the conversation was like, then, you know, Reddit. It's going to Reddit about fucking price. And I looked it up. 450 bucks, 500 bucks somewhere in there, depending on who you talk to. Which is, uh, pretty reasonable if you just got like hey here's my game i want to get a dev kit you can get that then you can continue on you know you already have the dev, dev kit at that point one year of w4 basic which is, is like here's your one game source is going to be available limited support costs more than that it's like a thousand dollars and some change oh i could see mm -hmm. indie devs kind of bouncing off like uh yeah maybe maybe you will try one of the unofficial ways of getting it on Switch, or ah, is it, what 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 is the solution to this? You get what I'm going at? I think it would be beneficial if, like, there was a open or gray sort of API for like PlayStation and for and for Xbox. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I I get that they want to maintain their trade secrets and whatnot, but like. Also, you want people making games for your platform, and you want to make that as easy as possible. Um, and you don't want I, to end up with, like, just, you got to use this, this, and this, and this is the only solution. Like, And if you're a larger team, or, you know, a big studio, yeah. you have employees. that That's their job to do this, you know? Yeah. So you're and not I, going to pay another company to and, do and, and the I, job of the employees that you already have. And, and, I, and I think a move like that would probably be more of a Microsoft move than a Sony move, because Microsoft is all about, seems to be like, we don't care what you're running. We just want our software everywhere so that you're you're logging in on your Mac to play your Game Pass. We don't care as long as you're giving us the $10, $12 to a month. <laughs> to some degree. To some degree. That's what I mean. Like, I feel they're, they're more amenable to a solution like that than, say, Sony. Sony is like, no, fuck you. You're going to do things on our terms. You got to sign up for the PlayStation ID network. If you want multiplayer on our shit. Uh, yeah, no, no, no open source for you. You better be careful. The ghost of Concord's going to haunt you. <laughs> it's already, it already haunts me and I can't hear it because I'm barely aware of its existence. All right. How much do you think Concord's going for on eBay right now? Uh, some people were actively there, trying to scalp it. It was like 250 there bucks. Are, at one what's day. crazy is there are physical <laughs> copies of Concord, yeah, right? Yeah. You can, you can go, grandma can buy you a copy of that for Christmas. Oh, He'll we go like, to eBay right for, now. Thanks for the co coaster, grandma. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> all right all right do we do we sort by uh welcome to under and over <laughs> i'll be your host <laughs> actually sold <laughs> all right. hi, hi, hide a low hide, hide a low. low let me um <laughs> get down here to more filters and get down so what do you guys think 150 bucks uh, no, two fifty. I I saw two fifty, so it's got to be probably more. Ah, now. So, you, so you cheated. Okay, cool. All right. <laughs> Not Concord right now. is so bad it crashes eBay. It did it again. Wait. Oh. <laughs> oh, one, oh, somebody's got the stack, maybe. Three, three, 399 Okay. 85 bucks. Pop. 109 yeah. And okay. here's the thing. Like, this, there's probably way too many of them. <laughs> I still broke it. The game's so bad. Uh, if I run across one for 20 bucks, I'm throwing a drawer somewhere. Hell yeah. I'm still I'm, I, I, every week I see a fucking rog ally show up on my local auction site and it keeps going up to like four or five hundred bucks. This is the I'm same like, one that that's this is what I want to know. This is what I want to know. Like, do, do people, they have an email where you can contact them? Like, are you guys getting jerked around? And you're like, I'll, I'll give you I'll give you two eighty for it. I'm I'm tempted to do that because I'm like, <laughs> who's actually buying this? I want it as a joke. People are people like seriously buying it. Like. It's, 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 it's like that fucking bit from Kung Pao. We trained him wrong as a joke. Go fight him. <laughs> Imagine getting like, I don't know, dude, like a rock out. Then again, then again, it comes down to like Valve being pretty good at keeping secrets. All of a sudden, if you got like a $200 rock ally and we get up Monday morning and Valve's like, yeah, here, here's SteamOS. Go put it on. Hell, I even Anything I just want to throw Bazite on there and just be like, ha, 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 look at me, I can't play Destiny. Bazite, uh, Steam Fork, all Play those Troll. projects, <laughs> like, pff, 
Steam OS no. comes out. I'm like, oh, yeah. so. But if if I install Playtron on anything, Strider will just come through my door and not deliver me the damn pizza he owes me. There you go. <laughs> there you go. That's the right way to look at it. On a lighter note, on a feel-good note, a little bit of fun before we end the show tonight. We're all fans of bad. Are we? Oh, yes. <laughs> but we're not fans of finishing <laughs> fuck-mothering sentences, are we? No, we're not. Good. <laughs> Which show have you been watching? <laughs> Oobal. Did we call him Uwe? Uva? Uva? I, 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 like, I, yeah. I, I, I as, as a child, I used to read it as Uubol, but it's... Uubol? As long as you get, like, the Uva and a bull and you say video game, everybody goes, gotcha, gotcha, right here. I'm yes. not a fan, but I have a fan. <laughs> Yeah, I got a couple. A little of those. dusty needs uh, <laughs> cleaning. <laughs> With your fucking emo goth ass dust fan. That, you, you know, to be fair, <laughs> that was a more well thought out joke than the entirety of the script of the first postal movie. <laughs> this is oh, true. Come on, that was the least worst one. <laughs> well, we're just going to shit on it because this is one you like. Now, to start back at the beginning, the origin story was like, we are all definitely fans, uh, love it or hate it, of bad video game adaptations. This love affair started with a lot of us with the original Mario Brothers. Use the stompers. <laughs> like, even as a kid, you knew it was bad, man. You're like, what the fuck is this, man? This is insane. The champion of bad video game films is Bull. 100%. Hands down. Gems like Blood Rain, which I will forgive because Meatloaf as a vampire was fucking delightful. Blood Rain <laughs> 2 with drunk as fuck Michael Martson. Dungeon Postal. Siege for the King, where uh, Jason Statham is uh, the farmer. <laughs> Jason Statham is Burt Reynolds' son, despite yes. the fact that they're the same fucking age. <laughs> fuck it. Uh, so... <laughs> Was his last movie Postal? I believe so. Maybe. Was it the last? What? Is he still making them? We gotta go back to eBay. It's, it's 2007, so... <laughs> uh, Uwe Bull <laughs> filmography... <laughs> um, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> First Shift is a crime drama film he did, apparently. When? Date. Uh, 2023. All right, so he's still making stuff. All right, he's still making stuff, just not video game movies. Postal was the last video game. Last thing. video game movie. And you remember okay. Postal? It was a lovely thing. Postal Two was a great thing. Let export and uh, running with scissors. So he decided he's going to make a sequel to that, and he just 800 uh, after 80. Oh God, only 850 <laughs> bucks. All right, yes. started a crowdfunding in Indiegogo. To uh, get this thing funded, and uh, after it got up to eight hundred and fifty, they just kind of pulled it. Uh, especially after running with scissors, said the fuck, we don't know anything about this. No, no one asked us. You didn't yeah. mention it <laughs> at all, which you kind of want to do if you're going to be making a movie based on a, a another company's intellectual property, right? Yeah, probably, at probably, least probably the, give the people who have owned the IP give them a heads up. It's like, hey, maybe you know. Get some money to do a follow-up movie. He was trying to raise $2.5 million um, for the dreadful, as they say at PC Gamer, uh, Pedro, we're going to get angry at you. Uh, so it got 16 pledges and 850 bucks, And then, again, it was just pulled. So, yeah, apparently his podcast co-host auto set mm -hmm. it up. Uh, uh, under sure. his orders, uh, because he said that he was the one who told him to do that. All right. But yeah, it was the uh, the the co-host of the podcast that uh, technically no. started it. But yeah, uh, I do like that uh, the the campaign had the already had the caveat in place, which is it's either going to be Postal Two or it's going to be. Some other fucking movie. <laughs> Cal Cal California Fried Movie, which is a sequel yeah, that's the one. <laughs> to his other fried movie film of which... G uh, Germany Fried Movie. <laughs> yeah, ger ger German Fried Movie from 1991 in which he writ he starred, produced, written, and wrote. But um, no, I mean, listen. And like, directed. It was safe because Bull said he was going to drop 
like 2.5 mil out of his own mm-hmm. pocket on top of it just to you know make sure he was gonna match the uh, the 2.5 well, mil of the uh, <laughs> campaign <laughs> well as, as it turns out there there's no more producer skims for mr bull i i think he should pr- consider giving boxing another go he beat the shit out of low tax i think he could do a good job uh, he, uh, apparently of the 16 people who um actually backed this before it got pulled they have a choice they can either get their money back or they can get the uh, Uwe Boll box set of movie. <laughs> but like that, that that's only worth it if you pledged under like three dollars because the entirety of the yeah, Uwe Boll like filmography the, is the worth one that dollar much. donations. Like, yeah, I'll take the <laughs> I'll take the box set. Now, for yeah. the record, running with scissors, like we want a postal movie sequel with or without. Oh, so he's still in the running, but. Uh, this kind of funding that can be pulled to make some other movie. Yeah, even they're like, this is mm-hmm. bullshit, dude. Like, don't, don't. <laughs> oh, man. Dude. Yeah, don't, don't. Bull. Don't, don't, don't do f- that. Don't <laughs> fuck with the 45 to 50 year old edgelords that came up with Postal. And the type <laughs> of people. On. Yeah, right. They'll pee on you. <laughs> they, will, they will shoot you with a cat. <laughs> Probably a bad idea. That's that's also most Counter Strike two players these days. Cat oh, skins, cat skins. <laughs> yeah, there's a cat, kitty cat skin for Counter Strike. Oh, I had no idea, dude. Have either of you played the um, Bedlock yet? No, I ha- I have not. I've been waiting for you guys. I played the cause... tutorial. I haven't finished the tutorial. I didn't even play the tutorial. I got into <laughs> training mode, and I'm like, I'm gonna figure this out on my own. I don't need a fucking tutorial. No, no, we just yeah, do no, the I smash cut to the, the like, flip clock as it goes like tw- <laughs> yeah. t- 24, 26, 28. It's like, I finished the tutorial. I fi- yeah. yeah, I finished the tutorial and uh, so it's like, okay, this is MOBA shit. Uh, it takes several headshots with the sniper lady using the ultimate to down a fucking player. Yeah. No. <laughs> just no. <laughs> there, yeah, there, there, there's like a League of Legends build gear thing i was i was listening to some other people talk about it and it's they seem to be like pretty interested in the the particular genre mashup that deadlock is because it hasn't quite been done in this way let's try something new man i mean you know all of your mobas have been top down dude like well except for strife which is pretty much the exact same game that deadlock currently is (laughs) that that that's that's not what i'm hearing from people who are playing it where like they're they're saying they're saying strife does not quite do the same level of stuff that Deadlock does. So, I don't know. The uh, only difference, again, I didn't play much of either of those games. I just played enough to formulate my own opinion, wrong as it may be. Uh, <laughs> but the one difference that I noticed was, uh, which I did appreciate in Deadlock, you can see the community builds for specific characters, and you can just go, oh, this build has a lot of votes, so it's probably good. And you just pick that build, and it'll automatically buy the items. That's that's, as you that's, go a, that's along. actually that's actually a really nice feature. That's like yeah. really, especially that, especially that, for newer that players. Helps, yeah, for people who don't play mobas. That helps a well, lot. <laughs> well, the, you know, there's there's this thing too called like Ivory Tower game design, in which you create a bunch of trap options. Uh, where like ah, getting good at the game means knowing like oh, don't pick these uh, these options. These are the worst options, and that's kind of bad game design. They should all be compelling, just for different reasons, right? Mm. Yeah, and they should all be viable. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, with deadlock, don't worry about it. Get a refund. Yeah, <laughs> I will give you guys for Strider, free because one of your friends invited you. Yep. <laughs> yeah, Strider, give me my refund. Damn it. There you go, lady. Hey, you know what? If you are playing this game, I don't care if you're playing it on Linux, Mac, what the hell ever, and you understand the differences between Strife and Deadlock, and you're like, here, and you can explain it to our three asses, let me know down in the comments, or head over to LinuxGameCast.com, send in an email if you want to do that. It'd be kind of brilliant. But before we get out of here, I do want to thank uh, Nubbin, who dropped his 51 month resub over here on Twitch, and our latest patron, a penguin kicks down the door. That's what that says, but it's too damn long. I kicks down... T- Here, you want me to help you out, Pedro? Yeah. Here. <laughs> I don't know if I can help you out on this page. I don't know if I have it unlocked. Let's see. <laughs> Twitch subs name box. Is that it? Maybe? Yeah, yes. all right. Here, here we go. <laughs> see, it still doesn't even fit. <laughs> okay. A penguin kicks down... T- <laughs> t- t- burp, burp. 
Okay, so okay, so it's not an I. It's just the end of the N. That's what yes. I'm talking about. Okay, okay. Like even right, that... with it fully exposed, it's still too long. Yeah. Okay. Like... okay that, 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 that's that's what tripped me up. It's like where's where's but where's the other I coming from? Oh, okay. How do you do that, man? Patreon.com forward slash Linux Game Guest. Sign up. Four quarters a week. A thousand quarters a week. Support what we do here. Each a million week. allowances worth of <laughs> One <quarters>. billion quarters. <laughs> no slugs or tokens. Yes. That's going to get you access to the pre-pre-super shows, which is our little production meeting that we do before every Saturday. And even join in live if you are a Death Note or above. And you get 11 uncut versions of these shows. Commercial free. Video version. You don't have to watch it on YouTube. You can just download it, watch it wherever you want. Custom RSS feeds. Lots and lots and lots of stuff, up to and including. We give you access to our Discord. We don't try to get you on our Discord, because we want you to show up if you want to show up. Somebody dropped 10 gift subs on Tuesday, which was great. We got a couple people popped in over on Twitch, because if you're a Twitch sub, go ahead and link (laughs) it up. I had some new people show up for Trackmania due to that. That was kind of brilliant, Tuesdays and Fridays. If you're interested in Trek Mania, you might want to get into it because uh, there's a high probability of a lot of people within the next month um, kind of coming to inspect what I'm up to. I just kind of get the feels on the project I'm working on right now, which is going to be Trek Mania adjacent. And it's just like one of those things. So there you go. There, there's your hint. There's your warning. Love to see it. If you got questions for me about audio, video production, interfacing Linux, Pedro and Jordan have Amazon wishlist. Hit the support tab over on Linux Gamecast. Plenty of different things. Pick them up something. Send them a note. We'll read it here on the show. we got a merch store, Amazon storefront, and of course, the Humble affiliates. Didn't get any worthwhile hate mail this week. I'm disappointed. No. <laughs> uh, you didn't you be- put the clickbaity title this time. <laughs> we, 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 need, we need some spicier wrong opinions. So you know what? Maybe Postal was the best movie ever made. You should have done uh, uh, Linux destroys Windows 11 again. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. What was, it, what, what was the title last week? Uh, oh, the Linux Tower of Power. Yeah, right? Yes. As opposed to Nobra embarrasses uh, mm-hmm. Windows 11. Windows embarrasses <laughs> Nobara. Windows pulls down <laughs> Nobara's pants and spats until It's probably what we red. should name the video and say it in this video like I just did there and timestamp it. <laughs> ah, Mackie's you Mackie. suckers, that's why it's called that. <laughs> yeah, the timestamp people, hello, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye, children. <laughs> I'm not going to name the video that, but that is going to be a timestamp. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that's going to do it. Time to cue the music. Check us out right here on Twitch, 8 p.m. every Saturday. Put us in your face. Put us in your ears. Maybe in your eyes if you're feeling a bit rambunctious. You want to get in touch with me? Vin Stone on the X. I'm at Vin, mass.linuxgamecast.com. Everywhere. There. Yeah, I think that's it. Oh, Blue Sky. Hey, that's still around. A lot of people are going to Blue Sky right now because, I don't know. Brazil. Reasons. Brazil. Brazil. All right. A- yeah. Um, I'm proud to announce that with Raspian and Batosera, I am starting my new adaptation of Postal 2 for film. Find out more about that on, on Mastodon at Brojo at Mastodon.com <laughs> at Brojo at bsky.app or at Burning Fool on Twitter. And now I'm wondering, because there were what, a lot of Brazilian people went to Google Plus and eventually died, so... Is that what's going to happen they, to Blue they, Sky? They went to Google Plus and then they died? Why did Google Plus kill them? <laughs> they had to yes, shut it down Google to save you Plus humanity. Uh, just killed a bunch of Brazilian people. It killed the Brazilian know. people. How many is a Brazilian? <laughs> so, yeah, no, follow me on Mastodon. It's um, an accounted for with the actual number four at mass.linuxgamecast.com. <laughs> Maybe we can, like, uh, shake down Blue Sky and be like, you know what? Thousand bucks, bucks a week so we won't let Pedro join. <laughs> <laughs> just keep Pedro uh, yeah. just time, time down yeah, break his fingers. Yeah. I'm not going to join that's cool I, <laughs> go ahead and do that I do have a space hay account I've headed for so like you know what? two or three you years know, Blue Sky, I got a space give us hay account. $10,000 a month and we will keep Pedro off of Blue Sky look me up on space hay forward slash Vinstone <laughs> pornhub.com slash Pedro Mateus alright get back in my top 8 spaces time for some credits <laughs>
You got to get last week's credits. I ran out of time today. Yeah. What about second bell riot? I mean, we need, we need some bell riots. We need some Cisco showing up and setting us straight. But he's off flying with Arthur and N12345, Ian Eshep, Kraducky, Drummer, the Targos, Pop Rem, Scott, Atomic, Mike. And our little Nikki fans flying through the wormhole. Turbo Sleuth, Tree Sloth, Eggy, Basil, Casey Clism, and Empty. And yeah, I said and that the Sea Monsters, Dancing Joe, John, Dirty Bean, Angel, Dementor, System TRL, Rider X, Machina, Nehemiah, Veritanuda, Trudgy, and Mike, and the Death Nose, Redisk, Mark, Tara, Oil of Hope, Benjamin, Nova, Chad, Romeo, Nubbin, Turnover, Martin, Ah, <laughs> Rude. Ah. <laughs> They're gone. Oh, okay. <laughs> Somebody needs to set up just called Ash. And Jason. And Jolly. We gotta, we gotta thank the liver, and the the liver players. And Ryan. <laughs> Which ones? Hey! Sandy and Shotty. Shotty. There we go. Libera Pay, Shotty and Sandy, thank you. <laughs> oh, man. Shandy, Shandy and Soddy. Can we just go back to naming companies <laughs> with nothing but, like, vowels? We're just removing wow. them. Oh. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you, got, you got a fun by new startup. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, like the Dwemer ruins in Skyrim. We don't talk no, about no, owners, I, dude. My, 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 my <laughs> spokesperson is Arnold Schwarzenegger. Give me money. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. You know he pays one dollar a year, and he owns the yeah for the Mister Free Suit. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's like in a vault under a mountain. I also like that he shows people that he doesn't like Red Sonia over and over again to torture them. Dying fire, everybody. <laughs> See you next week. Drop the beat. Five dudes. <laughs>